Blessings, everyone. It's time for another special big astrology transit video, and we are talking all about Uranus retrograde in Taurus 2021 and a little bit of 2022. And that is because on the 19th of August, Uranus is going to be retrograde all the way up till January 18th next year. And I talked a little bit about this in the August monthly astrology. If you have not seen it yet, it is there. And, you know, whether or not it, my stuff shows up in your feeds at this point in time, you're going to want to just, you know, come back and visit my channel every now and then the way you would visit a shop. And you will see something new pretty much every few days. But the Uranus retrograde little teaser I gave is what we are expanding upon in this video. And so whether you saw it or not, don't worry, you're going to get all the info you need. Also, I do want to remind folks, if you are not used to my all-in-one style of reading, uh, in this video I am going to list off all areas of life that are going to be getting emphasized for each sign because Uranus is retrograde somewhere in your chart during this transit. And so you're going to want to listen up for that. Pay attention to your sun. Pay attention to your rising, if you know your rising sign. And then as I go deeper into the discussion of Uranus retrograde, then you're really going to see what the story is. All right, so let's talk about what is going on for each sign. Remember what we are talking about here is going to give additional context as to how this is going to play out for you. And don't forget to also keep an eye on your rising sign or your ascendant, however you choose to term it in this context. Aries people, this is happening in your second house of earned income, employment, and your values. Taurus people, this is you. This is in your first house, the seat of identity, how you express yourself, as well as your personal lessons and your personal missions through this life. Gemini people, this this is your 12th house, your past, privacy, hidden zone, things that you've got going on behind the scenes, things other people have going on behind the scenes, as well as old business or matters from your past or your family's past. Cancerian people, this is happening in your 11th house of friendships, social connections, your social network, as well as your most lofty goals, ambitions, treats you want for yourself, or as I call this, the bucket list house, adventure. Leo people, this is happening in your 10th house of career, upward mobility, status, promotion, and the mark you want to make on the world. Virgo people, this is your 9th house, worldliness, travel, higher education, your spiritual education, spiritual knowledge, your reach, your connections with the great wide world. Libra people, this is your 8th house of shared resources, passive income, self-employment money, self-generated income, as well as intimacy. For you Scorpio people, this is all about your seventh house of closest one-on-one -on -one connections, partnerships, marriage, as well as business partnerships, best friendships, and, you know, anything that is going on where you are closely involved in a joint mission or a joint lifestyle or a joined personal goal. For you Sagittarian people, this is about your lifestyle, your routine, your health, your schedule, and your team affiliations, the team that you work on, and what is going on with the service that you provide to the world. Capricorn people, this is your fifth house of love, romance, creativity, what you are creating, as well as parenthood and your relationships with your kids. Aquarius people, this is your home, your family, your living situation, your roots, and anything that might have to do with household income or household quality of life. For you Piscean people, this is going to be all about your peers, your communications, right? Those that are in your community or your immediate community, your contracts, your agreements, anything that you are using to put yourself out there or to get connected with your local community or to build a community around yourself. So keep that in mind because now we're going to talk all about Uranus retrograde in Taurus. Uranus is the planet of upheaval, revelation, revolution, transformation, innovation, invention, experimentation, spontaneity, and of course, a little bit 
of creative chaos. And so when we have Uranus direct, this is where all of the random or all of the synchronicity, all of the excitement and the lightning bolt epiphanies come from. And when Uranus is direct, he can be very hard even for astrologers to predict. It's kind of like the wild card of the planets for astrologers. But with Uranus going retrograde, we're seeing all of those qualities muted and turned within in this part of your chart. When this happens, things get really, really calm and very, very still and very relaxed. Because with Uranus retrograde, as we always experience when we go through a retrograde, we are going through a period where collectively we are learning a lesson about in this case, autonomy, self-sufficiency, self-empowerment, and our ability to create without dependence on the external. So it's important to keep that in mind. Uranus retrograde, like all outer planets, is very much balanced. There's a bit of inconvenience, but there is a lot of convenience as well. And it's important to remember that and not get hung up on one versus the other or else we're just judging the situation and missing opportunities. With Uranus retrograde, let's talk about what's convenient here. There is less resistance, less interference, less randomness, less variables, and much less chaos going on in this part of your chart. Things are very peaceful, things are very mild, things are very calm. It's also a great time if you are trying to work with something that needs to be handled carefully or done in a way where those extra variables or any of that extra chaos is, you know, dimmed down so that if something is delicate or needs a bit more time to gain strength, gain traction, pick up momentum, it can do so safely and securely. And this could be a great time for those of you that want to start dipping your toes into things, whether it's a new pursuit or a big move, a new kind of relationship, or anything that you want to be able to take your time with and have a bit more of that ease in kind of feel. Uranus retrograde is also a good time for setting out on your own when it comes to gaining your independence, right? This is the time where we are all learning to claim sovereignty, independence, autonomy, self-sufficiency. And this is where maybe a little bit of our, I don't want to say inner rebel, but let's just say our inner true self is actually getting the support and having the resistance removed to be able to go their own way. And this could have to do with going your own way with a certain you know, goal or ambition or desire that you have that ultimately maybe on the external you were not getting a lot of support with or you were encountering a lot of resistance or maybe blowback for or blowback from. This is going to actually take a lot of the impact and really tone down a lot of that activity for you. So wherever you're trying to set out, propose something new, shake things up that you know or maybe in your past you, you've been shown that others may not necessarily understand or others may not necessarily be on board with. People are a lot more open-minded and again that sense of maybe anxiety over variability or anxiety over change, anxiety over progress, anxiety over growth, anxiety over transition, it's really dimmed down in this part of your chart. So, you know, you should go ahead and go for it. However, when it comes to what could be considered inconvenient is that if you don't do anything, nothing is going to happen. And that is because a lot of the guidance one may have may be depended on from the external, whether they are external synchronicities, maybe it's something going on in a social network, maybe it's prompts from other people, or maybe it's feedback. That's also getting toned down. And so if one maybe is a bit dependent on the peanut gallery or dependent 
on the external to give them context or inspiration or to create the change to be the spontaneous one in the connection or to be the initiator the creative this is going to be a completely different experience right because now it's toned down so we could either have a time where we are breaking out breaking free or we can have a situation where people are constantly waiting for a sign, right? Waiting for the opportunity to show up. Self-sufficiency, self-empowerment, self-autonomy, all of that kind of stuff is about being able to create and manifest and precipitate the changes you want yourself and so you got to also pay attention to where all right not a lot is going on nothing in this office is changing nothing in this house is changing nothing in this family nothing in this relationship or uh, I, i'm not seeing anything You've got to learn to manifest learn to initiate learn to be self-sufficient in this part of your chart because the resistance is gone the variability is gone and a lot of the interference is toned down. So you are clear. The road is open. You just have to actually take that road. And that is the nutshell experience of Uranus retrograde in Taurus, August 19th, 2021 through January 18th, 2022. And this will be especially strong for those of you who have planets or luminaries or important uh, mathematic points such as the north node or south node between 7 and 14 degrees Taurus, Virgo or Capricorn, Cancer, Scorpio or Pisces, or Leo or Aquarius. If you're a Sagittarius, you're a Gemini, or uh, maybe you are a Libra or an Aries, a lot of this is still going to be prevalent for you, but it's not going to be as stark or as intense. But we want to make sure that we are working with these energies, right? That is how we make astrology work with us. We are a part of it. It's a part of nature. It's a force of nature. We are nature. Let's do it. So that is what I have got for y'all. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a comment, like, share, and subscribe. And if you're interested in any more content from me, check out my main channel page. I just reorganized a bunch of my playlists, and I'm sure you'll find something you like. Y'all take care, and if you ever want to get a session with me, you can go on ahead to my website. It's integrativemysticism.com.